and the book is called How. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to share with you a book that has genuinely changed my perspectives on many levels. And the book is called How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by Scott Adams. And I have about an hour before I have to get myself out of that door. So let's get started, shall we? Now, before you jump into conclusions, let me assure you that this is not your everyday self-help book. And it's not about celebrating failures, despite what the title might suggest. Actually, the book brings with tangible and actionable advices that really hit home for me. And I'm convinced that it will for you too. So in the book, Adam chronicles his journey showcasing his failures, but more importantly, he shed light on the strategies that he implemented that ultimately propelled him towards success. Woo! Are you ready to dive in? Let's get the party started. With this, maybe? So first on the agenda, if you're after success, don't fixate on the goals. Focus on the system instead. Concentrate on establishing a system. Systems are fail-proof as long as you stick with them. With goals, you're constantly failing until you succeed. And once you succeed, once you reach that goal, you're left in the limbo. That was a standout point in the book. So rather than pinning for a far-off success, Adam suggests that we create a system around a task that we can follow daily. It's about simplifying things, not complicating them. By creating a system around a task, you reduce the friction to accomplish it. Every time you execute it, it generates a positive cycle and it boosts your personal energy. Consequently, you're driven to keep at it. And here's an example. So for me, a goal would be, let's say, to hit 10,000 followers on YouTube. So then I will be constantly discouraged until I actually hit 10,000 YouTubers. And let's say that one day I hit it. It's just another milestone. But on the other hand, a system would be to create or to publish a video every week or every other week. So if I constantly publishing video every week, it helps to foster a mindset and a habit. And every time that I do it, it would feel like that I have accomplished a mini goal and would gives me motivation and also amplifies my personal energy to keep going at it. Which neatly brings us to our second point, personal energy. It's a huge deal. Many of us grapple with time constraints and the best weapon that we have is manage our personal energy. Instead of fretting over task prioritization, we should always make our personal energy the top priority. This is because personal energy equips you to tackle all of your other priorities. But how do we manage our energy levels? There are many things that Adam mentioned in his book, but here I'm going to mention the top three because either they resonate a lot with me or I think I haven't done enough. And the first one is the basic essentials in life. Exercise, diet, and sleep. These are the vitals at maintaining our energy levels. Adam endorses experimenting with food to identify which food groups or diets could enhance your personal energy. And number two is to align your tasks with your energy levels. For instance, I try to avoid scheduling calls in the morning because that is the time when my head is the clearest. So I want to concentrate on the most crucial task of the day in the morning. And up next is harness associate energy and, wait for it, delusions for your motivation and game. Moods are contagious. So associate energy refers to the energy that you either gain or loss by interacting with others. To make use of this energy, associate with people who embodies the traits that you aspire to possess and visualize yourself becoming like them. And our third point is the power of positive affirmations. Now, don't turn off the video here. I understand that a lot of people don't believe in positive affirmations. Probably already tried to scroll away when I mentioned delusions up there, but hear me out. Previously, I was quite skeptical about this, but the way that Adam goes about it is that 
positive affirmation actually helps you to focus because they serve as a spiritual or a mental alarm clock that helps to shift you from a state of passivity to a state of focus. So now I sort of believe affirmation would work because I'm constantly being subconsciously reminded of my objectives and thus encouraging me to make the necessary effort. At the same time, visualizing a successful future would keep feeding positive energy to me and thus creating a positive feedback loop. And now point number four, be a generalist. Adam suggests that in our modern world, having a general understanding of several fields could be more beneficial than specializing in one. And this will not make you average. Um, in fact, it resonates with my own experiences because I was trained to be a professional interpreter, but my years working at a world-leading e-commerce company has taught me a lot into the business world as well as internet product. I also had a dream when I was younger to be a radio host, and I love content creating and marketing. While I am not at the top of any of those fields, but the combination of these fields or these skills have given me a career that I adore and a competitive edge. So explore your passion and all of its relevant skills and also consider the skills that are universally useful like grammar and vocal techniques and the art of holding engaging conversations. And lastly, point number five, we can program our changes. This, when I read this, it sort of completely blew my mind. Uh, when I read this, it was about when the time that ChatGPT became so popular and all over the internet. And as mentioned, as a product manager in a tech company for five to six years, it actually never occurred to me that I can think of myself or as human beings as products that can be programmable. So Adam refers to humans as moist robots capable of running programs and reprogram. He shared numerous self experiments in his book, like changing his diet, but he also emphasized that behaviors, human behaviors were not driven by reasons. It was actually just a simple cause and effect, just like how the machine operates. Um, he wrote, and I'll put it on the screen, that reality is that the reason is just one of the drivers of many of our decisions and often the smallest one. So when I read this, I wanted to argue back so bad as I consider myself as a rational being. But then upon reflection, he does have a point um, and resonate deeply with many of my own frustrations as well. So these are just a handful of insights that I wanted to share with you. There are so much more in the book. Adam shares his formula for success, for happiness, and his thoughts on luck and many, many other things. I strongly recommend you to pick it up and give it a try yourself. Um, his writing is very engaging and it's very heartfelt and relaxed. You won't regret picking it up. That's a wrap for today's book review. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And I'm just about in time. Actually, I'm a few minutes late. I have to go. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.